guys it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics and so guys in this video we're going to be talking about a disturbance that is located in the North Atlantic given a chance to develop and we're also going to be looking at the Pacific so there are two disturbances both having high chances to develop into tropical cyclones and so guys before I go into details <laughs> Okay guys, and so first off, let us talk about that disturbance in the Atlantic. So we have a tropical disturbance that is to the north northeast of Bermuda. And so guys, this thing here is going to be moving a bit to the south-southwest. Uh, it's really going to be lingering out there uh, during the next couple of days. And so it's given a low 10% chance to develop. And so guys, I'm thinking that this is highlighted as an area of interest because there is always the chance, especially the fact that this is a non-tropical low-pressure area. We see these storms come on very quickly we've seen it so much even this season we've seen it with Anna we've seen it with Danny so I wouldn't be surprised if we do have Fred coming from this area of low pressure but it's, again it's not guaranteed to happen but there is the chance that it could develop into a system guys and so we have to watch it and so at this time not looking as though it is going to be a threat to the US but if you're in Bermuda you might want to pay attention to it and so now let us go on to the satellite imagery and we're seeing here that we're not seeing much in terms of organization is going on in the North Atlantic and as for the rest of the basin well, we do have a dissipating wave in the vicinity of the Greater Antilles and we do have some shower and thunderstorm activity in the main development region but nothing much going on at this time we have this Saharan dust and some unfavorable shear that are helping to inhibit tropical cyclone activity and some of our models are not expecting much to happen in terms of uh, development at least for the rest of July but again we have to watch that low pressure system uh, that is in the Atlantic that might be a threat to Bermuda and so uh, things can change at any time I mean we can see things being this quiet now and next week we could have a significant change guys so we really have to pay attention to the tropics but it's really as we're going to be headed into next month and September that are really really going to be active guys and so guys now let's take a look at these systems over in the Pacific so here we have them and so let's first look at that one that is east and so this system here is uh, not designated as an invest yet because we do not have that low pressure area being formed just yet but it is expected to do so and there's a high 70% chance that when the system does uh, develop and we do have that low pressure area it could it has a very high chance of becoming a tropical cyclone during the next couple of days so maybe by this weekend or so we can expect to start seeing a bit of development happening here but again it's not guaranteed whereas the other disturbance that is a bit more west of that one given a high 80 percent chance of development through the next five days and also a 60 percent chance through the next 48 hours so it is likely that this thing here will develop before the one uh, that is more to the east of it and so guys this thing here if it develops it will acquire the name felicia because that is the next name to be used for the epac and if we're going to be having both systems developing the next name after felicia is guermo so it is possible that we could have these two systems develop into tropical cyclones and we do have uh, the gfs agreeing with this here so let's take a look at what the model is expected so this is tomorrow the 14th of july and so this is a map showing the isobars which are lines of equal pressure and the closer you see them in a circular manner with the pressure below 1030 millibars that is a low pressure system and sometimes with tropical cyclones and so there we have that 1003 millibar low to the southwest of the tip of the back california peninsula and so let's go further out and so this is friday the 16th of the month and so we see that the pressure has dropped and so the lower the pressure the stronger the system so we have a 986 millibar low pressure system here uh this is probably a hurricane at this point and then we have that 1007 low but we're not seeing much organization we're not seeing those isobars really coming together for that other disturbance there and so let's go further out and so by monday the 19th we see that the system is the first one that's given a 60 percent chance through the next 48 hours that's one we're seeing that nothing much is becoming of it but look behind it so we have that 994 millibar low that's definitely a strong tropical storm coming from or other disturbance and so going to wednesday july 21st here we have this the lowest pressure being 969 millibars this is definitely a hurricane at this point wouldn't be surprised if it's a 
major hurricane guys and so guys fortunately this thing here is going to be well offshore by the 26th we see that nothing much becomes of it and in case you're in hawaii and you're wondering if you might be affected let's go to the central pacific basin and so we see that we have that system being dissipated uh, well to the northeast of all the Hawaiian archipelago and so guys we're not expecting that these things here will affect the island chain but again we have to wait and see because things tend to change guys and so guys we really just have to watch these systems again it is possible that we could have other uh, two disturbances in the EPAC become in Felicia and Guillermo and over in the Atlantic we do have that non-tropical area of low pressure that has a chance of developing and so let's take a look at favorability across the region and so this is the wind shear map for the north atlantic and so we see that the caribbean and parts of the gulf of mexico especially the bay of campeche very unfavorable right now it's indicated by those reds but as we go further to the greens that means that things are favorable the neutral shear won't really impact our systems so we see here that we do have a lot of unfavorable shears uh, stretching across portions of the western main development region uh, the Caribbean and parts of the Gulf of Mexico and so out in the vicinity of where our disturbance is we're not seeing uh, a lot of unfavorable shear being there so that is really going to be aiding in its development guys so things might just be a bit favorable for us to even have a short-lived tropical cyclone and so going to the Saharan earlier map we have the different colors here meaning different amounts of dust or how dense it is in the atmosphere so we have the yellows being in that not a whole lot but as we go to the oranges and the reds that means that it is very unfavorable and dry air inhibits tropical development because tropical cyclones Cyclones need warmth and moisture so that moisture would be lacking for our systems and so we do have some unfavorable Saharan dust across the region as well and so this is really going to be helping our systems to not develop guys and so guys in terms of the ocean temperature map let's go to the eastern Pacific in the vicinity of our uh, disturbances it is going to be quite favorable to help them to develop guys and so guys as I said we really have to pay attention to them but it doesn't seem as though they will be threats to land or imminent and threats to land during the next couple of days and again guys we could have a tropical a subtropical cyclone developing from that area of disturbed weather out in the atlantic uh, northeast of bermuda and then over in the eastern pacific it is possible that we could have tropical storms possibly hurricanes felicia and guillermo developing by at least the end of this week and so guys we really have to pay attention to these systems during the next, next couple of days because as i said earlier it is possible that things can change at any time what you're seeing now or the potential for what you see happening now doesn't have to be the eventual outcome so we have to keep watching them as time goes by and so guys that is it for this update and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be weather wise